Hey everyone, welcome to today's breakdown of The Bad Batch. Today's video will go over episode 4, Faster. By far, one of the most fun episodes so far. Which is quite the change of pace from episode 3's gritty tone, which I really loved by the way. So we start this episode off in Sid's parlor, where Wrecker and Omega have clearly been playing games of Dedrick or Hollow Chess, the 3D chess-like battle game we saw R2-D2 and Chewbacca play on the Millennium Falcon. Omega beats Wrecker once again and he calls for a double or nothing game. This foreshadows where the episode is ultimately headed. Sid comes in and tells them that she has a job for them, being her personal security detail. We find out that Echo and Hunter are on a mission, if you can call it that, transporting nerf nuggets. Tech is concerned that Sid is not using them to their proper skill potential. This is a theme that has been developing throughout the season. The Bad Batch is living in a tension of trying to lay low and wanting to use their advanced skills to actually help people. In the last mission, we saw Echo really struggle with this tension. Now we're seeing Tech wrestle with it. Tech, Wrecker, and Omega accompany Sid to the desert planet of Safa Toma. This planet is another planet full of crime and vices and really outside of the Empire's reach right now. Much of the population is gathered to watch riot racing, which is essentially pod racing but utilizing heavily modified 12 series speeders with weapons. Later in the episode, Tech notes that these speeders were certainly not manufactured for this aggressive form of use. Most of the racers are droids, as the split-second calculations required could not be done by most humans, which is similar to how pod racing worked as well. The crew meets Sid's racer, a droid named Teo. Tech is surprised that Sid's racer is a droid. Teo gets in Tech's face and issues a challenge, but Tech does not pretend to know anything about riot racing yet, so he responds by saying he does not have enough information about this sport. This hints to us that he will gain enough information quickly. While the group is watching Teo prepare for the next race, a shady character named Milegi from Sid's past arrives, and the two bet on an upcoming riot race with their standard arrangement just like old times. The next day, everyone gathers to watch the race. We see that Teo is a very capable racer and appears to be winning, but Milegi speaks to his racers, which notably are not droid racers. He tells them to get Teo in a crunch, which seems to be an aggressive signature move that the crowd knows well. This maneuver causes Teo to crash and lose the race. While the group gathers the parts of Teo and his speeder, Milegi arrives to collect his debt. But not surprisingly, Sid is unable to pay. So in order to save Sid, Omega quickly offers a double or nothing bet on the next race. Remember, double or nothing? See? Foreshadowing. Malegi agrees, but takes Sid as collateral. Tech, Wrecker, and Omega return to the pits and begin fixing the speeder and Teo as they are preparing for the race. As they are preparing for the race, Tech points out a pattern that they seem to be noticing where Sid often needs help due to her association with shady characters like Milegi. After getting Teo ready to race, the droid racer makes fun of Tech for studying the course and suggesting that his strategy of offense is flawed. Before he can finish saying offense is the best defense, Teo is wiped out by a speeder from the current race. Tech volunteers to fill the role as racer. Before this race begins, we get a scene similar to the pod racing scene in The Phantom Menace where the racers are all introduced, and we see plenty of pit droids standing by as well. I personally enjoyed the racer that was a protocol droid with a B1 battle droid head, a callback to C-3PO in Attack of the Clones. As the race begins, Omega and Wrecker relay information and warnings to Tech who seems to have a clear defensive strategy in mind for the race. That strategy becomes even more clear when he intentionally drops all of his weapons to gain a speed advantage. This allows him to take the left tunnel that is a shortcut, but the track is not completed. His increased speed allows him to make the jump and close in on the leaders. Tech's defensive approach pays off especially when Milegi's racers attempt the same crunch maneuver that got Teo. Tech is prepared and gets out of the way at the last minute, causing his two opponents to crash. Tech wins the race. In a really cool scene, the crowd begins chanting his name. 
and Tech looks at the crowd and salutes. It's almost like Tech is starting to see that he can have value outside being a soldier. The final scene shows Sid and the Bad Batch settling the bet with Malegi. While Malegi's racer wants to blast Tech, Malegi stops him. He then warns the Bad Batch that the loyalty they showed to Sid does not always go both ways with her. I have to say, this episode was a lot of fun. I found myself laughing quite a bit, mostly because of Teo. While I think many will be tempted to call this episode a filler, I don't totally agree with that. This episode established a few things that are important to the Bad Batch's story. Sure, it didn't progress the overall Star Wars story in the way that Episode 3 did, with Commander Cody going AWOL and focusing on the clones starting to leave the Empire. This episode actually just zoomed in on the Bad Batch and built on the discontent they've been experiencing this season. A big theme of the season is the Bad Batch finding a purpose that utilizes their unique abilities, but a purpose that goes beyond just doing insignificant jobs for Sid. I think that by the end of this season, the Bad Batch will be working with someone like Rex to help in the fight against the Empire. We're also reminded that Sid may not be a character the Bad Batch can rely on when push comes to shove. I've always thought it was strange that Sid had not sold them out to the Empire yet for some quick cash. This episode showed us that she certainly finds herself in situations where she needs quick cash, so I don't think it's out of the question to assume that at some point in this season, Sid will eventually sell them out to the Empire. I really enjoyed this episode. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. What was your favorite part? I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day. May the force be with you.